Hey mate, what's going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Back out with a brand new video for you guys today. Uh, let me stop with the accents. But um, I like accents. Hey, um, we're gonna check out this video. Somebody want me to check this out. Um, 2019's absolute best horror movies. It's been a minute, y'all, since I've seen like a movie like that. It's like a lot of stuff I want to watch, but I just feel like I ain't have the time for it quite yet. But we'll see. So let's check it on out anyway. So in about a three, two. One. Gorehounds agree it's a great time to be a horror fan. Is that Emma Roberts? Even 2020 promises its fair share of dark delights, it'd be a shame if you missed any of the macabre horror highlights of 2019. Prepare to scream. Ooh, scary movie. The wide open spaces <laughs> of the American frontier are often romanticized by classic I've westerns, but one. the wind recognizes the terror and existential dread at the heart of those vast oh, desolate baby lands. Chicken? The debut film from director Emma Tammy follows a tough frontiers woman named Lizzie, played by Catelyn Gerard. She's clearly haunted by all the emptiness that surrounds her, not to mention the ever-present chilling wind howling across the plains. Despite reassurances from her husband, Lizzie becomes increasingly convinced that some sort of demonic presence is tormenting her. But is something supernatural really to blame, or is the root of all her horrors simply oh, loneliness? Shit. Well, the incubus is real, me there's no more sleep. Lord is my keeper. <laughs> It's a question that's bound to haunt anyone who braves this atmospheric slow burn of a horror film. The Hole in the Ground is a thoroughly unnerving movie. In his feature film debut, Irish writer and director Lee Cronin tells the oh, story of a movie. mother and son hoping to escape their troubled the past by moving to a remote countryside village. Needless to say, trouble eventually finds them there, too. Mom, look out! It's not your boy. There's something quite disturbing about their new home, especially that enormous sinkhole in the nearby woods. The boy's inevitable encounter with the titular hole in the ground leaves his mother feeling rather uneasy, and rightfully so. Sure, there's no shortage of horror films with creepy kids running amok, but Cronin handles the material in a way that feels both modern and fresh. As The Guardian writes in its glowing review, the hole in the ground always finds new, invariably cinematic ways to nudge us toward its final leap into the abyss. Cronin feels like a real find for our especially insecure moment. A horror movie doesn't need to take itself I seriously in that. order to be Damn great. It, I about take this movie. Crawl, Crawl, for example. This throwback creature feature stars a bunch of killer alligators chasing oh. a father and his daughter after their Florida home is flooded in a Category 5 hurricane. Damn. Who want to deal with that? No, it's not a particularly sophisticated premise, and that's part of what makes the film so great. Critics wholeheartedly agree, with Slate writing that it's fast, efficient, crisply directed, and delivers on the promised alligator thrills. Those B-movie values feel especially refreshing. Yeah, I want to watch it that. It seems like a straightforward revenge thriller at first. Oh, but that's the, the girl from Get Out. That, she looked like Emma Roberts for a minute. And it takes some extremely dark turns as it hops wildly from genre to genre. Good, Is it a body you? horror film, a psychological thriller? It's both, and a jet black comedy to boot. The perfection also happens to be preposterously gross, and yes, that's a ringing endorsement. The film involves Charlotte, a former musical prodigy played by Allison Williams. You already suspect she's up to no good when she seduces the school's current lead cellist, Elizabeth, played to perfection by Logan Browning. Or am I the luckiest man in the world? I don't even drink, and I feel giddy drunk. My two most perfect students together. Before you know it, the film morphs into a sadistic, oh, gore-smeared okay. spectacle that's full of nasty surprises. Adventurous critics were quick to praise the film, with Rolling Stone commenting that, in its own blood-splattered, limb-lopping way, it may be a particularly perfect thriller for this moment. Ready or Not got a bit lost in the shuffle when it hit theaters in summer 2019, and that's really too bad. This well-crafted horror film is a black comedy and slasher flick rolled into one, and it really deserves to be seen. At every turn, Ready or Not manages to be funny, intelligent, and incredibly well acted. <laughs> Why she look like the premise centers around a young woman named that Grace, look like played by Disney Samara character. Weaving. She's forced to play a deadly game of hide-and-seek upon marrying into a wealthy and highly eccentric family. As it turns out, that family evidently signed a deal with the devil several years mm. back, and the pact requires that Don't they sacrifice all. a newly joined member of the clan. The newly joined member is, of course, Grace, but let it suffice to say she's Dang. not going without a fight. The majority of critics love this sly and subversive film, with Vulture proclaiming, The movie is a vicious, richly funny, and artfully brutal tale that places Weaving's performance as its gravitational center. 
Set in the dark underbelly of the Los Bliss. Angeles art scene, Bliss follows the exploits of, of a struggling young painter who is clearly at the very end of her rope. This self-indulgent, self-destructive soul eagerly engulfs every drug under the sun in search of artistic inspiration. What well, she eventually finds her muse, but at a considerable cost. Aided by a seriously vampiric gal pal, she quickly spirals into a gruesome and gory nightmare of her own making. The results are thoroughly disgusting, but is it art? I don't know, something came over me and then it all just started pouring out of me. I don't even remember doing it. Bliss is a no-holds-barred assault on the senses, and in the best possible way. This film is so visually out there that it's just begging to become a future cult classic. The AV Club aptly writes that, Bliss approaches its aesthetic with a straight-faced intensity, pummeling the viewer with violent bursts of montage until you feel like maybe you might have been dosed somehow on your way into the theater. In Sweetheart, Kiersey Clemens plays a traumatized young woman who manages to survive a devastating shipwreck, only to wind up in another deadly situation. After washing ashore on a deserted island, she's left to her own devices with limited resources and must do whatever she can to survive. To make matters worse, a mysterious and malevolent creature seems to be on the loose. Oh, fuck With a runtime under 90 minutes, Sweetheart is a brisk and brutal chiller that dazzled lots of critics. Vulture clearly loved the unconventional film, writing that, Sweetheart is an ingenious affair, a no-nonsense monster movie that uses its limitations effectively and tells its story I've cinematically. Never heard of this one either. Over the years, we've seen more than Depraved. a few horror films riffing on Frankenstein, but Depraved is really its own undead beast. If you've ever wanted to see a zombie shamble his way through New York nightlife, this film is for you, but you better have a strong stomach. The Mad Doctor in this case is an ex-army medic with a severe case of PTSD. His creation, Adam, is thoughtful and intelligent. Oh, ah. It says a lot that this ungodly creature is probably the most empathetic character in the film. Rest assured, there's enough gore on display to satisfy even the most hardcore horror fans. But the best thing about Depraved is that it cuts way deeper than your average chiller. In my dreams from someone else, I owe you something like a normal life. No wonder the critical consensus on Rotten Tomatoes raves that Depraved jolts a familiar monster back to life with a potent blend of timely themes and old-school chills. Hagazusa, mm. a heathen's curse, is anything but a mainstream Hagazusa. horror film, but this full-throttle creep show oh, really manages to get under your one. skin. In the 15th century Alps, a young woman has been deemed a witch by the townsfolk, and honestly, you might be able to see their point. She spends her days hopelessly alone, with only her infant child and her beloved goats there to keep her company. But when the townspeople turn against her in a violent manner, guilt. she descends into a state of hopeless madness. Oh, dear. The results are both fascinating and repulsive. Hagazusa is beautifully shot without a doubt. More to the point, it features one of the most horrific finales in recent memory. So if you check it out, and you should, consider yourself warned. Neil Jordan's Greta is an outrageous and darkly campy thriller, but it certainly begins innocently I enough. I heard this Chloe before. Grace Moretz yeah. plays <laughs> Frances, a recent transplant to New York City who's struggling with the recent death of her mother. When she discovers a handbag left on the subway, she goes the extra mile to return it to its owner, the titular Greta, played with insidious relish by Isabella Huppert. Frances becomes fast friends with Greta, and to say that this French piano teacher is eccentric is the understatement of the century. Needless to say, the friendship quickly takes a turn for the severely sinister. People can't keep doing this to me. <sighs> Rest you assured, careful. this is certainly not the buddy film of the decade, but it is delightfully twisted stuff. Back over the head In that its positive review, Slate Bye, commented one good that time. Neil Jordan's depth control of pace and tone elevates Greta past mere gimmickry, resulting in a comic thriller whose goofy humor only compounds its mastery of suspense. Set in Mexico and focused Damn. squarely on the country's violent drug wars, the dark fantasy Tigers Are Not Afraid is certainly not for the faint of heart. At the center of the story is a little girl named Estrella, whose mother has suddenly disappeared with no explanation whatsoever. In the hopes of calming Estrella after gunshots are heard outside her school, a teacher gives her three pieces of chalk and tells her that they can grant her three wishes. Mm. As Estrella adjusts to her bizarre new life and falls in love with a roving league of fellow orphans, she starts to believe those three wishes might be entirely real. But make no mistake, this isn't some lofty exercise in magical realism. It's a bleak, unsparing, and totally terrifying film that critics absolutely adore. In its effusive review, Consequence of Sound proclaimed, the film is replete with unforgettable images, stellar performances all up and down the cast, and genuinely original and thoughtful revisions of expected tropes. 
Little Monsters dares to answer the burning question that's never far from our minds. Too. What would happen if a bunch of kindergartners found themselves smack dab in the middle of a zombie outbreak during a field trip? In order to keep her kids from getting scared, a wholesome school teacher, played wonderfully by Lupita Nyong'o, tries well, to make the kids Ew. believe it's all just a fun game. It is a bit scary. What do we do when we're scared? What's the song we can sing? Meanwhile, Josh Gad plays insufferable kids show personality Teddy McGiggle, who soon falls victim to the Teddy outbreak McGiggle. and starts looking at children in a whole new way. I've heard it all. Little Monsters proves that a horror film doesn't have to be deadly serious in order to be incredible. It's also been a huge hit with critics, currently boasting a 93% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Any child of the 80s or 90s knows scary stories oh. to tell in the dark. In this iconic and creepy series, author Alvin Schwartz gathered up the most eerie and unsettling short tales you know from why. the annals of urban legends and folklore. The film adaptation brings several of those stories to the silver screen in a way that will be frightening for children and adults alike. Some people believe if we repeat stories often enough, they become real. The consensus on Rotten Tomatoes speaks for itself, claiming that scary stories to tell in the dark opens a creepy gateway into horror for younger that genre is so enthusiasts. Disgusting. This is a frightening and cleverly constructed horror film that delivers plenty of jump scares without going overboard. You've heard of a waking nightmare, right? Well, Ari Aster's Midsummer plays out more like a waking daydream, and the results are fantastically frightening. Oh. What time is it? This is giving me Kiflam teeth. That can't be right. The sky is blue. You play DJ5. The fact that many of the film's horror about. sequences unfold in broad daylight Kiflam. certainly doesn't Kiflam. shield the characters from the dangers at hand. Far from it. This is Astor's follow up to his 2018 debut, the instant classic Hereditary. And it involves a young shell shocked woman named Danny. She's just endured a horrific family tragedy, and her aloof boyfriend, Christian, certainly isn't helping matters. In fact, he mm. clearly wants out of the relationship. Things Bye. go from bad to worse when Danny tags along with Christian and his pompous pseudo intellectual group of friends got that who are one heading off friend. to a remote Swedish village. Ain't got no the occasion with all is an ultra rare, ultra mysterious midsummer he festival. Be the sacrificial As we lamb. learn more about Same. the eerie pagan rituals on display, the film lurches toward a druggy, deranged conclusion that puts even the Wicker Man to oh shame. My God. This is folk horror at its finest. Jordan cult. Peele's Get Out was an immediate sensation when it movie. premiered in 2017, and rightfully so. And its us. blend of unconventional scares and arch social commentary was a brilliant balancing act, and the film is impossible to get out of your head once you've seen it. Well, Get Out certainly wasn't a fluke, as anyone who's seen Us can attest. The seemingly simple story involves a family that's being inexplicably tormented by their own evil doppelgangers during that a summer good. vacation in Santa Cruz, California. What are you people? It's us. <laughs> Us. Of course, you should brace yourself for plenty of twists and turns along the way. The film was widely praised, with the New Yorker's Nathan Lane writing, Us is political filmmaking of the most spirited sort, and it sets up quite a fight. The Hydes come to visit the Jekylls, and the Jekylls hit back. Whom you cheer for in the long run is up to you. Check out one of our- Yeah, with Us, um, I had did a review on that by, uh, when it came out. Um, damn, that came out in 2019? I feel like it came out a year or so before. Time is just going on. It's just it just makes it feel like some is old. Some things are older than others. You get what I'm saying. But um the concept of um us and get out, but specifically us, like the whole thing of clones, uh our dark side, you know, we have a light and a dark side. I believe that, you know. Some people unfortunately they they embrace the dark side a little bit too much, if you ask me. And you know, it hurts people around you. It affects people around you. I don't care what you say. But it's all about choices, right? For, um for horror movies, um, I hope that um the conjuring three, the devil made me do it. I really hope that one uh is good. Because after the nun, I won't say the nun was trash, but I feel like it could have been better. Because like a lot of scenes it was just like more of the same scenes she was just floating around walking slow as hell velik the nun uh with the the men singing the the scary opera sounds it was it was it was scary at some point uh in the beginning but then when they started doing the same that's all they had her do she was just walking around slow as hell with all the lights and stuff cut off pretty much look she was she i'll give her that velik is one of the scariest damn nun characters i've seen uh, this far. I will give her that. Because when she first made her appearance in The Conjuring 2, I was like, yo, she scares the hell out of me, but I like her at the same time. You know what I'm saying? I would definitely want to have her on my, um, my roster when it comes to horror movie characters and some others. But, um, 
hopefully, like I said, The Conjuring 3 will be pretty good. I think it will, though, because I, I wasn't disappointed with The Conjuring 1 and 2. 2 is my favorite, though, because, like, when they broke out Bellic, bruh, that, and then The Crooked Mon. I think The Crooked Mon actually is going to have his own movie, so I might check that out as well whenever it comes out. Whenever we'll, you know, we can chill from this whole quarantine thing, so. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed this video, though, pretty much. Some of these I will check out. I definitely want to see Little Monsters. I would like to check out Ready or Not. Um, the whole concept of, like, somebody getting found and you gotta kill them or something like that. It's a lot. But anyway, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, comment below um, what's some of the best 2019 horror movies you guys have seen and what's some movies that you guys are looking forward to seeing horror movie-wise. What are you looking forward to seeing? Me personally, I want to see The Conjuring. I think they have a Halloween movie coming out. I don't know if it's going to be this year or next year, but whatever, I'll be ready for it. I mean, it's Michael Myers, so come on. The last one was good. Jamie Lee Curtis um, resurrected her role um, so I'm, I'm definitely gonna check it out and uh, let me know if there's anything else I can react to for you guys hit that subscribe button follow me on my Instagram hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in a minute it's Taylor Rain and I'm out